Hello my dear friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we will going to discuss about one of the very important concepts that is related to Spring Boot and Spring Framework. So in this particular video, we will going to discuss about what is S2 database in Spring and how we can use S2 database, what are the configurations we can do so that we can use S2 database in our application and how we can see the console for our S2 database and how we can write queries and update data in our S2 database. So let us first discuss that what is S2 database. So if we talk about S2 database, then it is an inbuilt database which is provided by Spring Boot and we can use this database to perform various applications so if you want to create a small application or if you want to perform an POC for your project then you can use S2 database because it is an inbuilt database or it is also known as in-memory database which means that data is stored in memory and this data is not persistent. If we talk about an Oracle or an Postgres database then these are persistence database because they store the data in hard disk. Whereas if we talk about an S2 database, then as I have told you, it is an in-memory database. So the data exists in our S2 database only till our application is running. So as soon as we will stop our application, then the data will also get lost. There are certain properties which we can set to store our data for our S2 database. So this is about some of the basics related to S2 database. Now let us see that how we can set up our S2 database for our application. So this is an Spring Boot application which I have created to demonstrate you about our S2 database. So if you want to include an S2 database in your application then you need to add some of the dependencies in your pom.xml file. So these two are the dependencies which you need to add and libraries which is needed for S2 database. So first one is having an artifact ID as S2 and second one with artifact ID as Spring Boot Starter Data JPA. And these are the dependencies which is needed to develop a RESTful Spring Boot application or an Spring MVC application. So these are the two main dependencies which we need to add in pom.xml of our application to add the libraries which is needed for our S2 database. So this is about our pom.xml. Now we will discuss about some of the configurations which we need to perform for our S2 database inside our application.properties file. So this is our application properties file and here I have defined a server port. So our application will run at 8080 port and this is the logging level which I have defined for my application that is a debug level. We can also change this level to info or error based on our requirements. So now next one is an important property which is needed for our S2 database. So as I have already told you then S2 database is an in-memory database and data will get lost once we are stopping our application. So here we are defining an URL for our database that is JDBC H2 and then this MEM which means that it is an in-memory database. There are various modes of H2 database like an in-memory database or an server mode is there. Then we can also have an embedded or an hybrid mode of H2 database. But to start with I am demonstrating you with an in-memory H2 database. And here I have provided an schema name for our H2 database. So my dear friends, this is the URL for in-memory database. Now suppose if you want to store your data in certain file, then you can also do that. So how we can do that? By providing our URL as JDBC, then this H2, and then here we need to provide the file and then the location or the path. So either you can provide the URL like this or we can also skip this file keyword and we can directly provide the path. So here I have provided the path as C drive and then this data and this is the name of our file. So let me take you to this particular path. So here you can see that this is my C drive data and here it has created an file for tracing purpose and for storing the data which we have manipulated 
in our application. So this file will be used by an Azure database to retrieve the data for future purpose. So by using these URLs, we can store the data or we can make the data persistent for our H2 database. Now let us discuss about some of the other configurations which is needed for Azure database. So the next one is the driver class name. As we all know that to connect to any database, we need a driver class, correct? Like if we want to connect to an Oracle database, then you need an Oracle JDBC driver, correct? Similarly, here we are having an H2 driver. Then we need to provide the username. So this is the default username. You can also change this username and also you can change the password. So here we can define the username and password for connecting to our database. And then the next one is the database platform. So these are some of the configurations which you need for an Azure database. Then the next one, which is a very important property which is needed for an S2 database is spring.s2.console enabled. So if you want to enable the console or an web application for accessing your S2 database or for using your S2 database, then how you can see that visualized version? You can see the visualization of your database by enabling this console property. So these are the various properties which is needed to do the configuration for our Azure database. Now my dear friends, before starting our application, we can also add an SQL file under our resource folder. And in that SQL file, we can provide the scripts which is needed for our application. So suppose if we want to test some specific functionality, then you can simply provide the script. So here what I am doing, I am first dropping the employee table if it already exists then here i am creating our employee table with employee id which is our primary key and it is auto incremented then we are having and different fields that is employee first name then employee last name and these are also a not null field and one more field is there that is employee role and here we are providing an initial data for our employee table so i am inserting various values in our employee table so this is the first name then the last name and then the and the employee role we are providing and one thing you can notice that we are not providing an employee id because it is auto incremented and it will be generated automatically so as soon as we will run our spring boot application then what it will do it will first check that if there is any data sql file present under the source folder then it will execute that file for our h2 database so my dear friends here you can see that our application is already started now let us try to access our h2 database so this is the url which we will be using to access our h2 database so here you can see that this is an 8080 port which we have provided here and this is the default port for our application and my dear friends this is the default name which is provided by an Spring Boot to access an H2 database. And if you want to change the path name for accessing this database, then you can do that by setting this particular property that is spring.h2.console.path. So I have provided its value as slash h2. So I can access my H2 database by using this particular path. So let me copy it and let us try to access our H2 database. So here you can see that we are getting the console window of our H2 database. Now here we need to provide it certain properties if it is not autofilled. So this is the URL for our database, right? So here we have provided the same URL. If it is not auto populating for you, then you can copy from here and you can simply paste it. Then this is the driver name and then this is the username which we have provided that is an essay and then we need to provide its password so let me type it so i have provided the password let us test the connection so the configuration which we have done for our database is absolutely correct and it is providing the message as test successful now let us try to connect our database so my dear friends here you can see that we are getting the console window for our s2 database so in left hand side you can see various information 
related to our S2 database. So this is the username which we have provided that is SA. Then here we can have various sequences, then information about various schemas. So this is the default schemas which are already there. And then you might have noticed that we are also getting an employee table here. And how it is coming? This is coming because of the script which we have provided under our resource folder that is and data.sql. So here we are having an employee table, same employee table is here and it consists of four properties, employee ID, first name, last name and role. So these are the properties which we have provided. Now let us try to access the data from our employee table. So here I simply written select star from employee table. Let me try to execute it. So here you can see that we are getting the details of our employee table. So we are getting different columns and different rows for our employee table. So these are the six rows which we have added in our data.sql script. So all these details are stored in our employee table. So let us try to perform some operations on an employee table. So let me try to search an employee with employee ID as one. Let me execute it. Yes. So we are getting our employee with employee ID as one. Let me try to delete it. So delete from employee where employee ID is one. Now let us see that whether it is deleted properly or not in our employee table. So here I have simply written select a star from employee. Let me execute it. So here you can see that our employee with employee ID as one is not there. So my dear friends, this is about our S2 database. So we can use our S2 database to test our application or to perform an POCs for our application. Now my dear friends, in our next video, we will see that how we can perform various CRUD operations in our S2 database from our Spring Boot application. And if you are having any doubts related to the topic which we have discussed in this particular tutorial, then you can please write your queries in comment section. Wish you all the very best for your learnings.